Hi there. Welcome to the September the 1st edition of Needlepoint TV. I'm Ellen Johnson and I'm your host. I'm the owner of Serendipity Needleworks and the founder of the Stitchers Club. And as always, I'm delighted to be here with you this afternoon. We're going to chat about uh, using some different kinds of decorative stitches on your needlepoint canvases. Uh, so before we get started, though, I always like to make sure that you can see me and hear me OK. So if you do me a favor and say hello in the chat and then tell me where you're watching from. And even if you're watching this as a recording, go ahead and do that, too, because it's always so much fun for me to see who's here with me, uh, regardless of whether you're with me live or watching as a recording. So uh, like I said, we always like to make sure that technology is working right. And so, all righty, good deal. So I'm seeing that everybody is able to hear me and see me. OK, give me a thumbs up. Give me a heart um, if you're on Facebook. Um, and, you know, I don't really know what that translates to on YouTube. So, um, OK, so good deal. So I see Christine is with us and she's on YouTube. So great. Good deal. All right, y'all, I have already chatted over the course of the past few weeks about some different kinds of stitches that you can use on your needlepoint canvases. That's what the blog has been about for the last several weeks. And last Thursday, um, the blog post was, and you're going to have to bear with me. I need to hop over and pull it up so I can share it with you. Hang on one second. Uh oh, wrong, wrong one. Let me hop back over here and there we go. All right. I will share my screen with you so you can see if you haven't already read last week's blog post. It's all about using knotted stitches on your needlepoint canvases. So, so far we've talked about straight stitches. We've talked about slanted stitches. We've talked about, oh goodness, let me look and see. I can't remember. We've got straight, slanted, knotted, crossed. That's the other one. And there's one more to come, which will be published on Thursday, and that's looped stitches. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you so you can see in case you haven't, um, in case you haven't already seen. Okay, hang on a second. It's not one. To, oh, there we go. Wrong button there. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, operator error that happens sometimes, especially when you are um, when you're 57 years old. <laughs> so there you go. All right. So here we go. Let me I need to find the other tab that it there it is right there. Okay. So now I hope you can see that. If you can, please do go ahead and give me a thumbs up or say, yes, I can see it. Um, I think you can. I know I can. I don't know if y'all can or not, though. So if you can, tell me you can. And great. Oh, look at all these folks. It's so good to see. We've got Robbie and Ann and Pam and Joan and Janice and Cindy and Joyce and Deborah and Nancy and Carol and Liz. Oh, my goodness. All right. And then we have... All right. I'm not even going to try to say that, but somebody is watching with us from from Baltimore. I'm sure I'll butcher that. So we've got and we've got Deborah and Elle and Bernice and Mary and oh, uh, let's see, Nana and Kim and Christine and Susan and Susan. So did you know when you were little this every time I do that, it reminds me of this show that I watched when I was a little girl. It was called Romper Room. And they had this lady on there. Her name was Miss Jane. And people used to have their birthday parties there. And Miss Jane, at the end of the birthday party, would hold up her magic mirror and she would say, and I see, and she would roll off this long list of names. And I always sat there intent, waiting for her to call my name. And she never called my name because my name is not real common. And also, I didn't know that, you know, people's mothers sent their children's names in for their names to be called. But anyway, every time I do that, every time I look and call out people's names, I think of Miss Jane on Romper Room. So that dates me a little bit. All right. So let's see. Let's make sure you can see me OK. OK, good deal. So Robbie says, yes, she can see the screen. Great. That is perfect. So um, no, using knotted stitches on your needlepoint canvases is something that, well, first of all, let's back up. Let's talk just a minute about the different kinds of stitches you have that I'm talking about, at least in this blog series. Um, you have straight stitches, which are those stitches like uh, the Goblin stitch. Um, you also have straight stitches like the Brick stitch. 
um, the Parisian stitch. And there's a whole blog post about those different stitches and different ways that you can use those on your needlepoint canvases over on the Serendipity Needleworks website. So be sure and check that out if you haven't done that already. And then again, we also have uh, a blog post about slanted stitches. So there are stitches that are slanted stitches are the ones that um, are not straight. They're, they're things like the Byzantine stitch or, well, I'll tell you what, let's just take a peek and look. I'm going to scroll back up here and let's see. I'm actually, let me scroll down. I don't want to go too fast. I don't want to make anybody dizzy. But when you get down to the very bottom of this post, you'll see that that's where you can actually go and look at other posts that were on a part of this series. So if you click on the slanted stitches, then that will give you a, all the different stitches that are several, at least mosaic stitches, one, um, several different stitches that you can use that are slanted stitches and ways that you can use those on your needlepoint projects. But I digress. Let me get back to this week's blog post, which is all about knotted stitches. So a lot of these, in fact, all of these stitches are technically considered surface embroidery stitches or freestyle surface embroidery stitches. They're not counted canvas embroidery stitches. And that means that they're not executed over a specific number of canvas threads. Um, you actually follow the steps that you would use in order to execute these stitches. For most of them, there is one exception, but for most of these that you would use if you were working on a piece of ground fabric like linen or cotton or something like that. So um, let me scroll down and share with you. This is our very first um, our, our canvas that we were our what, what I call our study canvas. And it's a Melissa Shirley canvas. I love it. I think it's so cute. It's called Floral Hearts. And so what we're going to chat about now here on the uh, website, you can see that I have a diagram for you on how to do the French knot. Now, if you're watching with me from the uh, YouTube channel, there is also a video on the YouTube channel on how to do a French knot. So you can scroll through some of those videos and you'll find it. It's I don't know. It's been up for a couple of years, I think. But anyway, it's just a real quick video that you can watch on how to do a French knot. And um, so there are some tips here on how to do French knots. There's also another stitch called French knots on a stalk or French knots on a stick. And that's basically a French knot at the end of a long straight stitch. So you can use these kinds of stitches to add depth and texture to your canvases. The ways that I use these, and let me hop back over here now and I'm going to stop the share. So some of the ways that you can use those French knots or the French knot on a stalk are for flower centers. Um, you know, with that canvas that we were looking at, um, that Melissa Shirley canvas, that being a floral canvas, there were lots of different ways that you could use the um, those different stitches on that canvas. In fact, I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and, and share my screen again, because I do want to make sure Wait a second. Here we go. Uh, let's take a look at that canvas. I'll go ahead and let me get that pull back up so that we can see that. And so you can see that there are lots of different um, different places on that canvas that you could use. In fact, let me actually enlarge that. Um, you can see that the centers, each one of these little uh, rose colored flowers has a dot in the center. And this would be a perfect place to um, to put a French knot, just a single French knot. And something that I'm not sure that everybody knows this, it's sort of a, a little bit of needlework trivia, but a true French knot is actually just one wrap around the needle. So if you do more than one wrap around the needle, or if you take your thread around the needle more than one time, that's actually technically called a bullion knot or a bullion stitch. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have been doing more than one wrap, um, you technically have been doing a bullion stitch. So, but the French knot is a really good stitch to use on these little bitty flower centers. You can also use French knots for snowflakes, um, stars in the sky, um, eyes on little critters. If you have a canvas that has sheep on it and it has two little dots for eyes, you could do French knots for the eyes, all kinds of uses for 
the French knot on your needlepoint canvases. So another, the other stitch we talked about was the French knot on a stalk. Now one, it's going to be a little hard for me to um, get too close myself, but some flower centers, if you see that white flower up in the top, uh, right, sort of the top right corner of the heart, it has some, um, some darker colored dots in the center, but there are some little straight stitches or some straight lines that lead to those. That would be a good place for you to use French knots on a stalk. Anytime you have some type of a design component and flowers are the perfect example of, of this. When, whenever you have a flower that has a center with, um, you know, like a stamen in the middle with the stalk and then the little dot at the end. That's a perfect place to use French knots on a stalk. Now, I have to tell you, this is just a little insider information, too. All of these stitches are really good for Santa's beards as well. So, you know, not just for flower canvases, but for Santa's beard. You can use French knots for Santa's beard. You can use French knots on a stalk for Santa's beard. And so we have, and then there are a couple of other stitches. The colonial knot is a really good stitch um, and it's bigger than a French knot. The colonial knot is actually more wide or more, um, I guess it's more of an oval shape, but it also is, it, it appears bigger. Um, so it, 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 you use more thread to make a colonial knot because you wrap the, the thread around the needle in a figure eight shape or configuration. And so that's what, um, that's what gives you that bigger knot and also the shape that's more elongated. So you could definitely use that for flower centers too. And if you have a combination of flowers on a canvas where you have, you know, some, some smaller dots and larger dots, then you can mix up those French knots and colonial knots. Sometimes people have a hard time making the colonial knot work. I have to admit, French knots came easy peasy to me. I love making French knots. That's like my very favorite stitch ever. And um, so to do French knots is so easy for me, but it took me a while to to figure out the colonial knot. It just didn't make sense. And I was trying to figure it out from a stitch diagram. So um, it was a little bit of a challenge. So I finally mastered that, but I still use French knots way more than I use colonial knots. So if you know how to use a colonial knot and French knots are the bane of your existence, stick with colonial knots. Same thing is true with French knots. If you are like me and you have a, a more challenging time getting those colonial knots to look like you want them to, stick with French knots because they are very interchangeable. All right, the very last stitch that we're going to talk about today is the bullion stitch. Some people call it the bullion knot. It is a knotted stitch. So, um, you know, both of those terms you'll hear uh, used interchangeably for that particular stitch. Um, and when you work a bullion stitch on a needlepoint canvas, it is executed differently than it is if you are going to be working that stitch on a piece of ground fabric. So instead of giving you a stitch diagram for this one, over on the website, if you click the link, it takes you to a video that shows you how to execute the bullion stitch on a piece of needlepoint canvas. So there's a little tutorial that you can click on and watch um, and you can watch it as many times. It's really short, um, but I think it's 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 cuts to the chase and shows you how to do the bullion stitch. So hopefully you'll find that helpful. And um, so anyway, those are the four stitches that are included in this week's blog post on the Serendipity Needleworks website. Now, let me share with you how to get there because I know that there are some people who don't know where the Serendipity Needleworks website is. So there's the email or excuse me, the website address on the screen. So you definitely want to make sure that you hop over there. And something I would recommend that you do is to sign up for our weekly emails because there are all kinds of special little things that I share with my weekly subscribers. I send out emails every Tuesday. And in fact, if you are a weekly subscriber, make sure you check this uh, today's email or check your inbox for today's email. It just went out a little while ago. It was a little late going out because I've been working diligently on getting all the information pull together for my brand new workshop that's happening on October the 17th. And that's going to be called Stitch Guides Made Simple Live. It's a one day workshop. It'll be held on the Zoom platform and we'll be together from 10 in the morning central time until 4.30 in the afternoon central time. So that's a 
full day of needlepoint goodness, I'll be sharing with you my stitch guide success formula and how I write stitch guides for canvases myself. It's the system that I've used for the past 20 plus years. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I've been a needlepoint teacher for a well, needlework teacher actually for more than 25 years. I owned a brick and mortar needlepoint store for 14 years. And then I pivoted to the online space back in 2017, late 2017, after I closed my brick and mortar store, when my husband had what's called a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is basically a brain hemorrhage. He's doing fine now. And that's the reason I'm so happy to be able to be here with you sharing my love of needlepoint and all the things that I've learned through the years, because I wasn't quite ready to retire when, when it looked like he was going to be fine. And I said, hmm, I don't know that I want to just sit around and twiddle my thumbs. I think I want to continue teaching because I've been doing, uh, like I said, teaching for a long time. Plus, my background is in education. I have a master's degree in education from the University of Alabama. So not only do I know a lot about needlework after having owned a needlepoint store for 14 years, but I also know a lot about how to teach. So um, anyway, I would love to have you join me. If you haven't um, already signed up, like I said, for the uh, needle for the weekly emails for uh, needle notes, uh, then there is a place over on the Serendipity Needleworks website for you to do that. It's in the right sidebar, or you can click on the link or on the navigation bar where it says connect, and that'll drop down a little um, place for you to. In fact, well, let me just show you where it is. Let's see. Let me go to the Serendipity Needleworks website. <laughs> And I will show you where exactly that is so that you can see that. So let me share my screen. All righty. And let's see. Here we go. There is the connect little connect box right there. And when you click on that, it takes you to this page and it gives you a place for you to type in your name and your email address. You don't have to put your name if you don't want to, but you know, if you want to, you're welcome to do that. Then you just click sign me up and you're all set. So that is all there is to signing up for the weekly emails. Now, um, I did send out an email earlier today that was that shared the information on how to sign up for that workshop. If you're interested in getting information on how to sign up for that workshop, but you're not a subscriber to our weekly emails, make sure that you go to, let me, I'm going to send an email to that email address that's on our, um, on our, on the screen down below. And that will um, take you to, uh, it'll just pop up a little form for you to, to send over to us and say, hey, I'm interested in getting information about that workshop. So please send it to me and we'll be happy to take care of you for uh, doing that. And remember, Stitchers Club members, you get access to the basic package for this workshop for free as part of your membership. So you have an email in your inbox too, and all the members of the weekly email list have an, an email in their inbox. So that's their, the early bird pricing is good now through September the 15th. So after the 15th, which is two weeks from today, the price will go up. The price will increase at least by $50. So if you're at all thinking that you want to participate, Pay, I would suggest that you go ahead and sign up now before um, before that deadline rolls around because it'll be here before you know it. If it's any indication, if this year is any indication of how time flies is flying, then uh, you know I'll tell you hop on it now rather than later. Again. Thank you ever so much for being here with me. I hope that you will join me again next week when we wrap this up talking about looped stitches that you can use on your needlepoint projects to add depth and texture and dimension and all kinds of beautiful visual interest. Um, if you have any questions about anything, of course, you're welcome to leave those in the comments. I will come back and read those and make sure that I get your questions answered. And if you are watching this as a recording, of course, please leave those questions or comments for me there then too, because I do keep an eye on things. Thank you for joining me here today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, happy stitching. Bye for now.